Hi again. So the type of functions that we're going to start learning today is exponential functions. Now, an exponential function is something that you'll have heard about a lot on the news recently, and that's because um, lots of different types of growths can be modeled by exponential functions. So if you're keeping track of like the number of cases of corona that are going around and things like that, you, the graphs that you're going to see are going to be modeled by exponential functions. So for those of you that are asking, when is this going to matter to us? Well, it's mattering to you right now, right? So there's actually two types of exponential function graphs, and that's called a growth function and a decay function. So what we're going to do on our sheet of notebook paper is draw ourselves a box. I don't know how long this, how big this box needs to be. We're going to give ourselves a box and split it in half. So we can talk about the different types of functions. So again, the first one is called an exponential growth function. And the other one is called an exponential decay function. And that's exactly what it sounds like. An exponential growth function grows, meaning it increases from left to right. And a decay function decreases from left to right. So some of you might be thinking, okay, but lines also do that. Is this a line? It's not a line. So let's take a look and see what the equation, or sorry, what the graph actually looks like. And I'm actually just going to draw the top two quadrants when I'm creating my graph. And you'll see why here in a second. We're going to do that on both exponential growth and exponential decay. An exponential growth graph. Now I am doing a very, very rough sketch, okay? An exponential growth graph will look something like, not even that, something like this, okay? And an exponential decay graph will look something like this. Now, I hope you noticed that I did not cross the x-axis on either of my functions. And that is a very, very important thing for you to keep in mind. Because what we're about to do now is label a couple of pieces on that graph. Okay? One of them is pretty obvious. That's the y-intercept. Okay? That right there is the y-intercept. And same thing on my decay graph. That right there is also the y-intercept. But if you notice, like I said before, I did not cross the x-axis. And one of the really cool things about exponential functions is that there will always be a line that your graph gets closer and closer to but does not cross. So in this specific case, not always, in this specific case, it's our x-axis. Okay? Same thing on my decay graph. In this specific case, it's the x-axis. And that line that it gets closer and closer to is called an asymptote. Now, if you were in class right now, I'd make a joke about how this is the only time you're allowed to cuss in front of me, okay? But I'm not gonna make that joke. Okay, it's called an asymptote. And we're gonna go ahead and write down the definition of that. Um, and it's going to cross through both sections. An asymptote is a line it is a line 
that the graph gets closer and closer to but does not cross. Okay, it is a line that the graph gets closer and closer to but does not cross that line. So if you can see, my red growth function and my red decay function gets closer and closer to that yellow asymptote line, but it does not cross that graph, okay? Or sorry, it does not cross that line. Um, and that's basically the main differences between an exponential growth function and an exponential decay function. Now what I want you to do is come all the way up to the top and I want you to write the general form of an exponential function. So general form. And that general form is y equals a b raised to the x power. Now, the difference between what we've learned so far, exponents that we've learned so far, and exponential function exponents is that this right here has an exponent of x, okay? So what, diff what makes an exponential function special and what lets it stand out from all other functions is that x is in the exponent, okay? x is in the exponent. Just like a squared makes a function quadratic, just like um, absolute value bars make something an absolute value function, having x in the exponent is what makes this an exponential function. So now let's talk about how that equation looks different for a growth function and looks different for a decay function. And it all relies on that b value. It all relies on that b value. So y equals a b raised to the x. This b is called your growth or decay factor. In our case, since this is growth, it's gonna be called a growth factor. And your b value must be greater than one. So b has to be greater than one. B is greater than one, okay? That is the main difference between an exponential growth function and an exponential decay function. Notice I did not say anything about the a, okay? I did not say anything about the a because the a is not gonna change whether it's a growth function or a decay function, it's the b value, meaning the base, meaning the value that is directly underneath the x, okay? That is directly underneath the x. For a decay function, same general form, except for now, your b value has to be between 0 and 1. B is between 0 and 1. And if you guys remember from our transformations, that means it is a proper fraction. Okay? So it is our B that needs that is the most specific thing that you need to look for. Now we are going to put a star down at the bottom. No matter whether it's exponential growth or exponential decay, B cannot be 0, 1, or negative. Okay? B cannot be 0, B cannot be 1, and B cannot be negative. And I'm sure you can figure out why that's the case. Take your calculator and go substitute in 0 for B and see what happens. Substitute in 1 for B, see what happens on the graph. And substitute a negative number in for B and see what happens on the graph. And you're going to see on that graph that it does not look like an exponential function. Um, let's go back up to asymptote really fast. We're going to add in one little piece that I forgot to add in. The asymptote is going to be based on the vertical shift. Okay, so it's basically the k value. 
It's basically the K value. So if your K is a seven, that means your asymptote is at Y equals seven. If your K is at a negative two, that means your, y, your asymptote is at Y equals negative two. Um, this is all that's gonna be for characteristics. What we're gonna go to next is a couple of examples where we're trying to figure out what is it growth, is it decay, and what is the asymptote. So watch the next video for that.